Andrew Davies, Andy, Divs, a chameleon of a man in more ways than one, the chef, the hunter-gatherer, the parrot, the spider, the chartered engineer. Sit back for a moment while we elaborate, but we think you'll agree that Kez has bagged herself quite a man. Where to start? The fact that he still reads the Beano at 32 years old? That he still watches cartoons on a Sunday morning? Or that he was responsible for getting us banned from a Lake District cottage for destroying a family heirloom, Persian rug? On occasion he struggled to comprehend how some people don't share his enthusiasm for eating at every hour God sends. On one occasion, Divs had been out sampling the local drinking establishments. When the night drew to a close, he could think of only one thing. The obvious choice, chicken nuggets. Chicken nuggets. <laughs> chicken nuggets. Overcome with happiness at his new purchase, he staggered home and entered the house around 1am, where an unsuspecting Kez was sleeping peacefully upstairs. Andrew slipped off his shoes, silently climbed the stairs. He approached the bed began to slip lukewarm chicken nuggets into Kez's mouth. As you can imagine, that's not the only occasion when divs and alcohol have been combined with unexpected consequences. As usual, on a weekend night, Divs and the gang were out enjoying a few pre-club beers. After a while, some bright spark decided to get in a few rounds of shots before heading to World Headquarters. The rounds in question were tequila, and it was quickly discovered that tequila hit Divs a little harder than the rest of the group. So, thinking he probably wouldn't get into the club in the state he was in, Rich and I decided we'd go and get him some food. So we take him to the takeaway, order some pizza or a kebab, and next we know he's produced a deck of cards from his Berghaus jacket. And yes, he's trying to play the Mediterranean guy behind the bar with the ace of clubs. I quickly advised Divs that these were not legal tender and he should probably let Alex handle it. While waiting for his food, Divs popped off to the bathroom. Nothing could go wrong here, thought Egg. But in the corner of my eye, I noticed Divs struggling with the toilet door. It turned out he was stubbornly trying to gain access to a cubicle, inside which an annoyed couple had been interrupted whilst enjoying each other's company. Egg quickly diverted him to the empty toilet adjacent. Finally enjoying his pizza, Divs professed his thanks to Alex and me by waving tomato sauce covered hands towards our shirts. The plan wasn't working, so they decided to escort Divs home. He's been watching Alex though, and something isn't quite right. Exclaiming that Alex is in fact an imposter who has stolen the sum of £200,000 from me, he wrestled Alex to the ground on muddy grass. Now, for those who don't know me, I'm about five foot eight, five foot nine, and about half the size of Divs. And he takes pretty badly to the fact that I, that I might be an imposter who's stolen his friend and is trying to cheat him out of something and decides to, well, break me in half. And I wade in to separate them and find out what exactly has happened to this 200,000 quid I keep hearing about. A nice police lady turns up and they explain it's a simple misunderstanding of imposter money theft. We talk this policewoman out of arresting him. Uh, at this point, he kind of mellows out a little bit and we decide the only thing left to do is to call his dad. So we call Tony, who's not very happy. 
He gets out of bed, comes down to pick us up. When he arrives, there is a sense that Divs might be in quite a bit of trouble. As his father drives him home and they get close to the house, Divs senses his situation and needs to say something. Mustering as sober a voice as he can manage, he says, Turn left here, mate. Andrew's love affair with food hasn't just manifested itself in the odd weird concoction of polo mint beef stew or shoving fried chicken products into unconscious people's mouths. He's often stretched that extra mile to squeeze every last bit of enjoyment out of his meals. Once, at work, Andrew is assembling his sandwich. Strange for Andy to be making a sandwich at lunch. He could usually think of nothing worse. Boring sandwiches, he would jibe as he headed down to the microwave to heat up the remains of whatever one pot he had cooked the night before. If he hadn't brought anything in, he would go to Sainsbury's local and buy a cooked chicken or a microwave meal. He once ate a whole chicken with a side of lasagna for lunch. Anyway, we digress. As Andrew was assembling his sandwich, his eagerness got the better of him, and over-enthusiastic filling resulted in a stray piece of parmesan jumping out onto the office floor. Not one to waste food, Andrew leant down to retrieve said piece of parmesan. This was a move that his Primark work trousers were not built to withstand and an almighty tear ripped across his behind. Over the years, Andrew has developed a reputation for being, how should we say, a bit slow? The Gizmins! Special. Not all there. Like a sandwich or a picnic. Maybe two. All of which came to a head when we went to visit Neil in Manchester once, and Divs and I needed some cash. While the lads chatted in a group, Divs and I went to the cash points and stood side by side withdrawing our money. I turned to Divs and said to him, how much are you getting? Tom, man, Tom, to, you can't tell that one. What do you mean I can't tell it? <laughs> can't tell I'm that. telling it! I'm telling it! <laughs> Andrew has always had an eye for engineering and has clearly learnt a lot from his dad. In fact, Andrew spent a lot of his career in human waste management. His passion for such a smelly subject developed at an early age. In 2001, he and Bertie took a gap year to the beautiful island of Cuba. Whilst there, they stayed with a local family and were taken aback by their hospitality. One night, after a long evening drinking rum and sampling his host cooking, Andrew found the need to avail himself of the facilities. In other words, nature called. But while seeing to his needs, Andrew discovered that the Cuban flushing capacity was not quite prepared for a six foot three inch man from Gosworth. Locked in the toilet, he wondered what to do. He made an executive decision. For the sake of the audience, I won't go into details, but let's just say he's had a um, hands-on attitude ever since. We can only hope that Andrew's adverse encounters with food and what we turn food into is behind him. I think we can all agree that Kez has done an excellent job in civilising him so far, but there is still room for improvement. A lot of improvement. Andrew was single for a while, and uh, one day he rang me up and said um, that he'd got a blind date coming up. I imparted him with the only advice I thought necessary for the evening. Mate, don't be yourself. I caught up with him a few days later and he told me that he'd had a wonderful evening with a girl named Kez. In a moment of uncharacteristic emotion, Andrew told me he'd walked in, looked at her sitting there waiting for him and had nearly walked back out because she was so beautiful. Thankfully he didn't and she clearly saw something in him and that's why we're all here today. Dave's Cares, have a wonderful day. Sorry we can't be there with you, but we'll celebrate with you in a few weeks' time. Uh, woo! Congratulations! <laughs>
ladies and gentlemen, in summary, here we have a generous family man of simple pleasures who has a passion for food and drink. He can be only described as the best man a friend could ever have. Divs, somebody sure taught you well, and I'm so happy that you found your new best friend in Kez. Massive congratulations. Please raise your glasses to the new Mr. and Mrs. Davies. Cheers.